Now that you know a little bit more about the timeline and how to set keys, let's talk about interpolation. Interpolation basically means the speed of change between the keyframe's property values. The interpolation panel is located down here. As you can see, we can't use it until we select a key. So let's select one. I'm just going to select these two. And you can now see at the top of the interpolation panel, we have five different options for the type of interpolation we want to apply. By default, all new keyframes are set to linear. However, we also have hold, cubic, cubic value, and elastic. Let's forget about cubic value for this video, since we'll cover it later in the course. Below we have our interpolation graph. This is a visual representation of the speed at which our property changes from one key's value to the next. The x-axis represents time, and the y-axis represents the change. The angle of the line therefore represents the rate of change. Since we have a linear interpolation applied, this means that the line is a straight diagonal line, and therefore the rate of change is a constant speed. Just like this. Now notice that when I have keyframes highlighted, and I then move the playhead in the timeline between this set of keyframes and the set of keyframes after it, that we have a vertical blue line in the interpolation graph moving from the start to the finish. This vertical blue line in the interpolation panel shows us exactly where we are within this specific interpolation. Below our graph we have some numbers. These represent the slope or curve of the graph. Now that you're familiar with the panel, let's talk about the different interpolation types. As I said before, by default every new keyframe has a linear interpolation. This means a constant change over time, and you can see this in the motion path. Each small dot has an equal space between them. If I was to change the interpolation type of these keyframes to hold, this simply means that these keyframes now hold their value until we reach the next set of keyframes, at which point this next set of keyframes have a linear type interpolation, and therefore from this point on there is a constant rate of change. Hold keyframes are especially useful for when you want to change the opacity of an object instantly without seeing it fade in or out. Linear interpolation is useful for animating things that move with a constant speed. However, most things move at a varied pace with some sort of acceleration or deceleration. And that's where cubic interpolation comes in. By default, the cubic interpolation curve gives us a nice acceleration and then deceleration. And you can see this when I play the animation. This set of keyframes has cubic interpolation, so we accelerate and then decelerate, and then this set of keyframes has linear interpolation, so from this point on we move at a constant speed. But I'm going to apply cubic to these keyframes as well, and I'm going to change the interpolation of both sets of keyframes in exactly the same way. What's great about cubic interpolation is that we get these little handles to change the ease. For instance, if I want to start my interpolation fast and slow down, I would use this shape. And if I press play, you'll see that we do start off fast and then slow down. If I wanted to start off slow and speed up, I would use this shape instead. And if I wanted to start slow, speed up, and then slow down, but in a more extreme way than the default, I would use something like this. The final interpolation option is elastic. This has a few options. Ease in, ease out, and ease in and out. If I just use this option, you'll see what elastic is good for. 
anticipation and overshoot. So as you can see, the square pulls back in anticipation and then goes forward and then overshoots its position and bounces back. We can change this to just have anticipation and we can change it to just have overshoot. One thing to remember is to be careful when applying interpolation directly to higher level keys, because the same interpolation is going to be applied to all of the keys inside at that position in time. If you want to have different interpolation on your different keys, then you need to apply the interpolation on your keys one at a time. Thank <laughs> you.